In this chapter, I will show you how to render OpenVDB mesh in Redshift. In previous chapter, we created OpenVDB mesh from particles. And also we prepared velocity tags for proper motion blur and vertex color map, which allows you to transfer particles color onto the mesh. As next step, I need Redshift material. And I will apply this material on OpenVDB mesher. As you can see in render view now, I have full control over OpenVDB mesh look and I can tweak material parameters exactly like with any other mesh. But with XP OpenVDB mesh, we can do even more. As next step, I will use vertex attribute node and I will connect vertex attribute node into the diffuse color. As next step, I need proper attribute. That's the reason why we created point color map from X particles. If I will drag and drop point color map into the attribute field, as you can see in render view, I have proper gradient color map now. These gradient colors are transferred from XP emitter onto the OpenVDB mesh. But in case that I don't want to use colors generated by particles, I can disconnect vertex attribute node and I can create material from scratch or from presets, depends on my scene. For this example, I will use water preset. Remember that if you would like to render liquids, you always have to have proper environment. So as next step, I will activate dome light with HDRI map. And as you can see, proper lighting and environment produce totally different result. In second part of this chapter, I will show you all necessary steps which you have to do if you would like to render XP OpenVDB mesh with motion blur. As first step, I have to select OpenVDB mesh and I need to use Redshift object tag. In motion blur section, I have control over motion blur custom settings. But for this example, I do not need to change them. And also I have control over motion vectors and that's exactly section which is important for proper OpenVDB mesh motion blur. So as next step, I have to activate this section and I have to use proper X, Y, Z motion vector maps. That's the reason why we created velocity tags. So now I will drag and drop velocity Z into the Z field, velocity Y into the Y field, and velocity X into the X field. Important parameter is scale, which controls motion blur intensity. Before I will continue with other steps, here is one important information. If OpenVDB mesh velocity or color map produce artifacts, not enough smooth transition or other weird looking result, increase smoothing iterations parameter. For color map, I'm usually using values around 20. And for velocity, usually default value 0 or 1. But if you can still see any colors or motion blur artifacts, increase smoothing iterations even more. As next step, I have to go to render settings, redshift, and in motion blur section, I have to activate motion blur. As next step, I have to activate also deformation blur because without this option, it will not work properly. Everything else in this section, I can keep on default values. If I will hit render now, as you can see, motion blur effect is almost invisible. So as next step, I will select redshift object tag and I will increase motion vector scale. As you can see, it produces more visible motion blur effect. And here is comparison, how looks render before and now. If you need even more visible motion blur effect, increase motion vector scale even more. And as you can see, it produces much more stronger motion blur effect, but also you will need to increase unified samples for more clean result. And here is comparison, how looks render before and now. Remember that XP OpenVDB Mesh Motion Blur is controlled by motion vector scale and deformation motion blur. And here is how looks final render. 
So now you get an idea how to render XP OpenVDB mesh with Redshift.